Wait! Nay looks over her shoulder. Oh boy. She spears me with eyes full of hatred. How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Steins Gate. And uh, last time, we got all the way up to Chapter 9, which is where we are currently. Uh, we saw some more, some, some more, you know, kind of cute scenes with Kuritsu. And, uh, got a couple achievements along the way on our journey to getting to the true ending. And, uh, we may or may not get to it in this episode. I guess we'll have to see. I don't know how long it'll take to get through all these other elements. Um, but we've only got just a short ways left to go. So, uh, I guess we'll just keep on trucking, huh? So uh, let's get into this episode. I think we'll get our first option when we notice that someone right here, when someone uses the time leap. Now, uh, I'm going to still time leap. We'll come back and see what happens if I don't. Right, okay, then we wrestle with, with her. So uh, I did answer Moe or Moeka. I did answer Kuritsu the first time, so we'll do that again. Okay, then we got mail. Assistant. Contact me, idiot. Is everything all right? What happened with that uh, Kiryu lady? At least I... Oh, at least let me know if you're still alive. Don't say anything stupid like you're dead or... Uh, like you're dead, okay? Please just reply. Even an email will do. I'm so worried I can't even eat. Aw. Kuritsu, no. Okay. So, um, so in order to get the next, uh, flag, we have to go with, uh, worried. Don't worry, I won't die. Not until I've fulfilled my promise to go to Aomori with you. Aww, I like that. Ah, that's so sweet. There it is. Uh, maybe this isn't what you want to hear, but I need you to listen. I don't care about Aomori anymore. I just want you to be safe, Okabe. When you ran out without saying anything yesterday, it felt like my heart was going to explode. So hurry back, please. Aww, dude, it's so cute. It's so cute. I love it. We pretty much, I think the only other thing we have to worry about is sending the D-mail at the end of this chapter. All right, and then we send it. There we go. Yup, there it is. All right, and there's chapter 10. Okay, so let's go back. Just see some of the other options we could have done real quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll start chapter 10. Should I really leap now? Okay, so this is where we just are gonna bypass it. Should I really leap now? Don't be ridiculous. Of course I should. Just a little more. And I can save Mayuri once and for all. I know what will happen if I don't leap now. Mayuri will die. And I will taste that pain and despair once again. And then, I will leap. It's the same either way. I close my phone. Okay, so this was right after someone used the time leap machine. I wonder if we'll get any information on that or not. There's no need to rush. Calm down. I can endure the pain, if need be. I should exploit my one advantage, the time leap machine, to the fullest extent possible. And that means knowing exactly when Mayeri will die. The pattern suggests that Mayeri's death should happen around 7 or 8 tonight. But things are a little different this time. Moika killed herself before Mayuri was scheduled to die. How much influence will that have on Convergence? There's a chance Mayuri won't die. We might already have won. In that case, I shouldn't waste my effort time leaping. I have no obligation to save Moika. I'll wait until Kuritsu contacts me. It's 12.30 now. There are still about seven hours left. Okay. I hear nothing but the slow, steady tick of the clock. The sound is echoing inside my head. 
Even if I plug my ears, it doesn't stop. I spent several hours searching for the IBM 5100, but as expected, I found nothing. I still can't imagine how Moika's D-mail affected the computer's whereabouts. What does her phone model have to do with anything? Does keeping the same phone somehow tell her that there's an IBM 5100 at Yanabayashi Shrine? That doesn't make sense. Even the butterfly effect must have limits. But on the other hand, truth is often stranger than fiction. Sometimes the simplest things have consequences that no one could ever imagine. So I can't rule it out entirely, either. In other words, I have nothing. I twist my lips into a sneer of self-mockery. It's 7.46 p.m., the moment of truth. If Meiri is indeed fated to die today, I should be hearing from Kuritsu soon. I hope nothing happens. All that I ask is to hear Meiri's voice. To know once and for all that she is safe. <laughs> okay, let's save here just in case, because there's an option to, like, maybe not answer. So, okay, answer. Hello? Okabe! She's... Uh, why? I don't... Kuritsu is sobbing. So I know. Even without asking. So, wow, so we just got multiple calls. We got one from Daru trying to protect her. We got one from Kuritsu trying to protect her. Oh, man. She saw Meiri die. She just... I saw it happen. She's dead. Meiri's dead. This... This can't be. She's suddenly collapsed. Why? It doesn't make sense. She's not breathing. She won't answer at all. Please, Mayuri. Okabe, what should I... What do I do? Help! Please! Mayuri's dead! I'm sorry for making you go through this. With that... I hang up the phone. Maybe it's because I didn't see it happen. Or maybe my heart has simply grown numb. But this time, I don't feel much pain. I hate myself for it. I pound my fist against the table. As expected, the deadline is around 8pm on the 16th. Unless I change the world line before the time limit, Mayuri will die. Okay, yeah. I put on the headgear and activate the time leap machine. I must obtain Moika's phone, no matter what it takes. No, it doesn't even let me skip it this time. Alright. Interesting. So let's see what happens if we didn't pick up. <laughs> An artificial melody cuts through the silence of the lab. My phone is ringing. There's only one thing that can mean. Mayuri is dead. For all my wishful thinking, I never really doubted this was going to happen. There's no need to confirm what I already know. Just as I thought, Mayuri is doomed to die on this world line. Silently. I apologize to Kuritsu for forcing her to watch it happen. Alright, yep, and then everything happens the same way. Gotcha. So, we'll just let this play out this way, and then we'll go to where we're supposed to answer Kuritsu's phone, but then we just won't. I make several consecutive leaps to travel back to the 11th. When I arrive, it's just past 8pm. 8, 8 I'm heading out. I leave the lab without waiting for the others to respond. Got you. Okay, so that was a little bit that we didn't do right at the end. All right, and then we have the apartment stuff. Uh, right. Crap, that startled me. Could she have picked a worse time? 
I try again, this time asking nicely to borrow her phone. Moika doesn't reply. She's staring at her phone. As she realizes that it's not her phone ringing, I see fresh tears pool in her eyes. She hangs her head. Why won't you respond, FB? You're the one who recruited me. Moika starts typing yet another mail. I guess she really doesn't recognize me. This is frustrating. Why is she acting like the victim here? Does she think she's a tragic heroine? Does she think she deserves sympathy? You don't have the right to be so weak. It's Mayeri who deserves sympathy, not you. She died countless times because of you. Murderer. I swallow the word before it passes my lips. Darn it. I check my phone. It's Kuritsu calling. I stand up and move to the entrance where I can take the call without letting Moika out of my sight. Hello? Finally! Where are you? You promised you'd help with the phone wave, remember? Or is your lab mem number just for show? Get Daru to help. I can't do it today. Okay, so I think this is all the same. Yep, okay. So we'll just zoom past all this. All right, so now we just don't answer. I take one last look at Moika's body lying there. Causality is a strange and terrifying thing. At the beginning of all this, Moika killed Meiri. But now, Moika lies dead, while Meiri still lives. All because I changed the past. Moika. If you're going to apologize for a sin you didn't commit, then I must apologize as well. I am responsible for twisting your fate, and for twisting the fate of Tenoji Nei. I ruined that innocent girl's life, made her something other than what she was meant to be. Is it okay to just leave her like this? Of course. If I send the D-mail now, this world line will be undone. Nay's twisted fate will be corrected. There's no point in worrying about it. I should just think about Mayuri. I shouldn't burden myself with any more problems. Is this really okay? Of course it is. Send the D-mail. That's all I need to do. Why won't my fingers move? I already know what I need to do. And yet... Okabe? Wasn't there something strange about that girl? Yeah, okay. Are we going to get to see what happens? See, I was thinking about not going through with it, but I thought, well, it doesn't really matter, right? Technically, but now maybe we'll get to see. That girl? You mean Nechan? I nod. She was like a different person. What did she mean she'll kill me in 15 years? It bothers me. She must be the cause of his death later then, or something. Does she know something? What was she implying? Don't worry about it, Okabe. Send the D-mail right now. That'll solve everything. <laughs> I put FB's phone in my pocket. I can't pretend I didn't see that. Nay's crime is partly my responsibility, and I need to know what she meant when she promised to kill me 15 years from now. I'm time leaping. Back to the lab. Kuritsu sighs, but I pretend not to hear it. Interesting. Okay! Alright, what's gonna happen, dude? This is weird. Okay, um... Our enemy? But... 
Kiritsu glances at Moeka, then whispers into my ear. Isn't she our enemy? It's about 7am, right? Huh? Well, yeah, but where did that question come from? After time leaping four hours back, I find myself in front of the station. This is right after Moeka and I met up with Kuritsu after returning from Narita Airport. After this comes the Tenoji residence. Moeka is standing a few meters away, kicking the dirt and boredom. Moeka was dead just a few minutes ago. But now she's perfectly fine. I feel no surprise. I suppose I've grown accustomed to this particular facet of time travel. After all, I've seen Mayuri come back to life countless times already. There is one other thing experience has taught me. Today, Moeka and Tenoji will die, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. I know it's cruel, but I didn't come back here to save them. I don't have the means to, and it isn't my problem. The problem is Nay. We arrive in front of Tenoji's house, just like we did before I time leapt. But this time, I wait outside with Kuritsu. Moeka enters alone, expressionless as ever. While we wait outside, I tell Kuritsu what's about to happen. I also tell her to wait a little while after she hears the gunshot, and then go inside and take Tenoji's phone. It feels like an eternity passes in silence. And then... Uh. <laughs> Kuritsu gasps, her body goes stiff. There really was a gunshot. Oh, I immediately look around. Just as Kiritsu told me, I see a girl come out of the window. She walks away quickly, but at the same time taking care not to make a sound. That's not how a child acts after witnessing her father's death. Wait! Nay looks over her shoulder. Oh boy. She spears me with eyes full of hatred. That alone is enough to make me shiver. It's pitiful, but a tiny little girl is making me nervous. Something is very wrong here. This Nay is like a completely different person. I want to know her true identity exactly! That's why I time leapt instead of sending the D-mail. You little brat, get back here. Nay is still running, ignoring my calls to stop. I run after her. Out of shape though I may be, I'm still more than a match for a 12-year-old girl. The distance between us quickly shortens. Nay keeps running, occasionally looking back at me and grinding her teeth in an in a very unchildlike manner. Normally, a child being chased by a man will cry and scream things like, Stay away! Or help! But this girl says nothing. The only sound is her heavy breathing. STOP! I call out to her once more when she's nearly in arm's reach. Unexpectedly, Nay slows down and eventually stops to catch her breath. Ah. <sighs> Looks like she's realized she can't get away. From the sound of her breathing, she must be at her limit. We're alone. Kuritsu and Moeka st must still be at the house, and the streets are empty thanks to the Oban holidays. Perfect. I was afraid someone might report me as a child molester. Now I can get what I need to know out of this strange girl who looks like Nay. I call out to her as I catch my breath. Are you really Tenoji Nay? <laughs> Nay glares at me as she catches her breath. I know she's not. You plan to kill K Kiryu Moeka after this, don't you? 
That's right. She punctuates her nonchalant reply with a cruel smile. That is not the face of a child. Revenge for your father? You and Kiryu Moika killed daddy. Your dad killed himself. He blew his own brains out. He would have done it even if we hadn't been here. It's not our fault. I don't care. What? Kiryu Moika was there when Daddy died, but she didn't stop him. I won't forgive her. Nor you, Okabe Rentaro. You weren't there, but Daddy wouldn't have died if you hadn't gotten involved. Wait, is she blaming me for finding the IBN 5100? How the heck was I supposed to know? But I won't kill you now. I can't. The tiny little girl, barely half my height, looks up at me with a smile that chills my blood. I'll kill you in 15 years. Keep living in fear until then. I get on my knees and grab Nay by the shoulders. I hold back my terror and meet her stare for stare. And yet, this girl doesn't even flinch. Who are you? She isn't Tenojine. What do you mean you'll kill me in 15 years? Exactly what it sounds like. 15 years from now, I killed you. Killed? Why is she using past tense? Nay laughs once, a harsh and mocking sound. Then she leans in and whispers. You still don't get it? Just now, you asked who I am. I am Tenoji Nei, no doubt about that. But I remember the next 15 years. Oh, did she go back in her own body? Okay. No. Did she... Time leap? Oh! Yeah. Nay suddenly whips out a knife, catching me completely off guard. Oh, frick! Oh, what the frick? God! Nay drives the knife into the elbow of my right arm, which was grabbing her shoulder. Blood sprays onto Nay's face, but she doesn't even blink. Instead. <laughs> she laughs. Just like she laughed when she killed Moeka. Darn. It's... The intense pain brings me to my knees. For a moment, I panic, but somehow, I manage to convince myself that I'm fine. I won't die here, I tell myself. This world line won't accept that. It's just like Nay said herself. It's not that she won't kill me, she can't. If she tried, something would surely interfere. Wanna hear how I killed you? In the future, you were one of the founders of the resistance against CERN. But I captured you, and imprisoned you, and tortured you every which way I could think of. You cried, and screamed, and begged for your life, all while covered in... Da -da -da. You were one sorry sight, Okabe Rintado. After I ran out of things to do, I finally slit your throat, and then I stabbed you over and over and over again. So many times, I don't even remember. That's how your life is going to end. That's your punishment for murdering Daddy. 
Nay grabs my arm and digs her tiny fingers into the wound. <laughs> my nerves burst into flame. Not just in my arm, but throughout my entire body. The pain forces the air out of my lungs in a blood-curdling scream. I can't shake off Nay's hands. I can't even move a finger against the pain. Aha! Uh -huh. CERN confiscated your time leap machine. They kept it locked away for 15 years. Until I came for it. After I became a rounder and killed you, I used that machine to come all the way back here. It was hard, let me tell you. That piece of crap can't leap more than 48 hours at a time. To travel 15 years in 48 hour increments would take... Darn. I can't calculate through the pain. 2,738 leaps. I messed up a few times, though. So it was really more like twice that. At least. I kind of lost count after a while. Now I get it. When I came to this world line, I went back to the lab after learning of Moika's suicide. And once I got there, I found evidence someone had used the time leap machine. So that was Nay's final time leap. Nay keeps staring into my eyes as her fingers crawl deeper into my wound. I bite my lip in a desperate attempt to bear the pain. My blood won't stop flowing. It collects into a puddle and stains the asphalt dark red. Revenge was all I lived for. I won't let anyone get in my way. I will kill Kiryu Moeko with my own two hands. I won't let that witch kill herself. She doesn't deserve to go out easy. You leapt 15 years just for that? She's insane. And it was Moeka and I who made her that way. Who turned an innocent little girl into a creature of hatred starved for vengeance. We stole 15 years of her life. 15 years. I can't understand what it's like to live with such hatred for so long. Just for that? Nay's slender fingers pry deeper into my wound. So deep, I can feel her fingers against my bone. <laughs> it might not mean much to you, but to me, killing you two means everything. So you kill Moeka. But what comes next? Next? Are you going to repeat those 15 years all over again? <laughs> what do I care about those 15 years? There's nothing for me there. She does not cry. She does not sneer. Her voice is flat and emotionless as she speaks these words. There's nothing more I can say to this girl I destroyed. At last, Nay lets go of my arm. She looks in disgust at her hands, now covered in my blood. I don't need anything from you now. Just wait in fear and regret, Okabe Rintado, until I come for you in 15 years. Doesn't she know, though? If she knows she has the time leap machine, I mean, she knows that we can go back and just fix things, right? I mean, so could we just go back and stop her from doing that? <laughs> so it was Nay. Okay, so I was thinking it was going to be someone else in her head, but it was actually just Nay from the future. Okay. I'm powerless to stop her from running away. <sighs> <laughs> Dry laughter leaks out of my mouth. That girl's disconnected from causality, just like I am. 
I asked her what she would do after killing Moeka. She didn't answer. The first time she lived those 15 years, all she had was revenge. And after time leaping thousands of times, she exacted that revenge. How will she live those 15 years the second time around? Will she kill me again? Will her revenge be complete then? Or will it continue forever? Until even she forgets why? The thought squeezes my heart like a vice. Does time travel bring nothing but pain? We built a time machine out of curiosity. We were fools. If not for our meddling, CERN would not have targeted us. Mayuri would not have died. Suzuha would not have had to travel to the past. Faris would not have lost her father twice. Lukaka would not have had to forsake her feelings for me. And Moeka would not have killed Mayuri. Okabe! Kuritsu runs up to me. She turns pale at the sight of my bleeding arm. What happened? Are you okay? She kneels in front of me. Worry is etched on her face. The phone. I brought it, but... Kuritsu hands me FB's phone. I take it and start typing out the mail with my left hand. Hey, tell me what happened, will you? Should I call an ambulance? Calm down. I'm gonna send the D-mail now. R right. If the world line changes, then this wound will go away. Yes, but who cares about my wound? Tenoji's death, Moika's death, and the damage to Nei's soul will all be undone. That's what matters. I finish the mail and take a breath. Hey, why do you think Tenoji didn't kill Moika? What do you mean? Any rounder who finds an IBM 5100 is silenced. No exceptions. That's what Tenoji said. In that case, the one who should have been eliminated first was Moika. She found the IBM 5100 in the first place. And yet, Tenoji cut contact with her instead. And when we exposed his true identity, he shot himself, not Moeka. I think... I think he wanted to save Moeka. Yeah, because he's still a good guy. He just got into this bad business to save Nay for whatever reason or to help her or whatever. I don't know. He didn't explain that super well. Perhaps that's just wishful thinking. Perhaps I'm just looking for an ounce of comfort in all of this suffering. Even if that was Tenoji's intention, it was meaningless. Moeka will die today. Whether by her own hand or Nay's, it doesn't matter. However, I hope it works out on the Beta World Line. They are the enemy. I should hate them for killing Mayuri. But in some sense, Tenoji, Moeka, and Nei are all just victims of my foolish experiments. I pray that they can live normal lives, at least on the Beta World Line. For their sake as well as Mayuri's, I must send this D-mail. Sorry, Nei. Once this D-mail is sent, this world line will be undone. But I can't let you have your revenge.
Wow. The world shatters, warps, and reforms. Eventually, those sensations disappear, and color gradually returns to the world. I find myself standing in the street near the lab. The burning pain in my right arm is suddenly gone. I look down. There's no wound, no blood. Instead, I'm holding a convenience store bag with two bottles of Dr. P. I guess it worked. I head straight for Moika's apartment. Oh, this is where we get to see this. Okay, see, we didn't know we didn't know what happened here. Why, why there was Dr. P in one uh, version of the like you know in the next version we jumped over to. So this is explaining that. Got it. When I get there, Moika opens the door normally and peeks out at me. She looks fine. No signs of despair. No blood stain by the door. No knife either. Okabe-kun. How did you know where I... Let me kill some time here. I barge into the room. The hour of Moika's death passes with no sign of Nay. The world line has changed. I don't need an IBM 5100 anymore, Moika. Moika's right in front of me, but she sends me mail. Feels like forever since we last conversed like this. What do you mean? My supervisor told me to stop looking, Moika. FB told you to stop. How do you know about FB? Where did you get that information, Moika? <laughs> so FB still alive. I feel relief, but also fear. I mustn't forget that he is my enemy. For now, however, I'm more interested in what Moika just said. FB canceled her mission to retrieve the IBM 5100. Doing your duty sets you up for disposal. So we're more like cattle than dogs. I recall his last words. Perhaps he cancelled her mission so that they wouldn't be eliminated. If that's the truth, then maybe he really was trying to save Moika. Live in fear and regret, Okabe Rintado until we meet again in 15 years. I wonder what happened to Nay. I can't get that childish yet hate-filled voice out of my head. On that world line, I turned an innocent girl into a murderer. I bite my lip hard, hard enough to draw blood. I won't fear you, Nay, nor will I repent. That world line has already been undone. But how will things turn out on this new world line? No, there's no point thinking about it. If the plan worked, the IBN 5100 should already be back in my possession. And if that's the case, then there's no need to stay on this world line either. Interesting. So he must have finished that Dr. P and then she used the bathroom in the other route that I took, so. Yep, so this is all gonna be the same, right? Yeah, okay. Yup. Wow. Wow, dude. Holy crap.